and convince people. And then the other hand is oh, when he talks, he knows it's not right. But the words he couldn't control, he keeps releasing it in a, in a way that harms his dear friends, people close to him. So remember, the words you say and the implication it has, right, will also affect the judgment from the heavens and the uh, ghost realm. So if your words is too sharp and it's senseless uh, and harms people, only it serves to harm people, not awaken people, then you will angered the ghost, angered the gods, basically the people who are enforcing the laws. Uh, Ying e zhi zhu, it will be recorded as hidden, not hidden kindness, hidden trespassing, hidden transgression. So the opposite of hidden kindness is hidden transgression, even worse. Hidden kindness gives you a extra uh, good karma it, instead of obvious kindness. Obvious transgression or obvious uh, wrongdoing is less harmful than hidden wrongdoing. Like as in someone who is being scolded by the whole world, all right, they already have bad karma appear, right? They scolded, they bar, they sanction throughout all the times. But someone who appears good, but they're actually not so pure inside and they do a lot of bad things inside, that person has a, a, lot, a whole lot of bad things waiting for them, waiting to happen. And Mr. Yu has a hidden evil or hidden tr uh, transgression. And you can imagine, now you can start to understand, I think we all can start to understand why he has all these calamities, losing seven children, wife has gone blind, careers not working, financial not secure, um, because of this. He appears as good, but he's actually not. So compared to someone who appears as bad, and no, everyone knows he's bad, he's actually got heavier punishment, heavier penalties. So back to this, So I'm used the that tone. If you, if you read what he said from the kitchen god, So after doing all this, you know, he talk about papers, he talk about saving lives, he talk about taking care of your words, but your action is using the paper wrongfully in the wrong purpose. Right? Reuse the paper in the, I mean, you wasted the paper by treating it as a cloth. Second thing is, is uh, you say you release life by you're eating all the animals or even killing the, the animals yourself. And then also you talk about being careful with words, but every time you talk to people, you hurt people. You hurt them, especially people close to you here, he mentioned, among people who you know. So, and then you label yourself as someone who's very uh, noble or very, uh, how to say, uh, less desire. I'm, very, you know, I'm following the ways of the Tao or that. I'm, so, who are you lying to? Are you lying to the heavens? That's his tone uh, from the kitchen god. Now he goes to even more serious stuff. Every time I look at this, I was like, oh my god. Like, how many do I have? Everything. Like, even vegetarianism. I am a long time vegetarian. Am I truly compassionate? No, I still have angers. I still have that sense of sometimes even tong the sasin, you know, it's even worse. Killing, at the thought of killing, even though it's a, a moment of anger. That anger of wanting to harm people, that thought's still there. That means we're still not compassionate, guys. So that's that's why all these things are meant to expose our our under, you know, those things hidden underneath. Get rid of it, clean it up. No matter how painful, how much you cry, just get it out and look at yourself and see how much things I have done and how much thing I need to work on. Only then you can talk about uh, how to be virtuous, to have good merits. There's a reason why we are not getting what we have. There's a reason why we have obstacles in our life that's not working because we are not aware of what we did. Maybe in the past, but in this case, Mr. Yu didn't talk about his past life. We talk about his current life, what he did unconsciously, consciously. He didn't know. He's not aware. He might know, but he's not fully aware of it. So our job now towards ourselves, our responsibility towards ourselves is learn what from him, his example, to, to get all this thing out. Like what is the most serious part I have in myself? 
and how do I go about in reforming it? So you can follow the example of Mr. Yu. If you keep reading, he will say that. So we continue on the fourth things he did. All right. First three, we will talk about that. The fourth one is sexual misconduct. Now this happens, this is not happening in action. So he's, he's not having extramarital affair. He's, he's still normal, like with his wife and all that. But problem is, even though sexual misconduct or unwholesome thought, um, sexual misconduct, even though there is no actual action in it. However, every time you saw someone pretty from other people, uh, from other place, you always look at it without letting it go. So you, not just one glance, you keep looking at it without letting it go. It applies to male and female guys, not just male to female, male, female to male. Uh, and in the, in the modern days, it goes both ways more often. So once you look at them, you never let go. And inside your heart, your heart is already yao yao pun and chen. So you already wavered until you, you could not chase back your sensibility. So you lost your sense um, of you know moderation when you look at someone good looking. Uh, however, because you have no opportunities to act on it, that's why you haven't actually put in action to pursue sexual misconduct. To, to commit sexual misconduct. So, Mr. Yu, you have to think. Uh, you have, so, Mr. Um, Yu, I advise you to think back in the same encounter again in future. Could you do, could you reach the same level or could you emulate the example of Mr. Lu, a man called Lu? So, what did he do? He is a, he's, how to say, Mr. Luke has reached a level where in the thoughts he do not attach or do not get swayed away by the appearance of pretty, uh, pretty woman and stuff like that. So he did not get swayed by the lust. Yeah. So this. That's basically saying that no sexual misconduct means do not indulge in lust. Um, so, Mr. Yu, could you be, could you learn from, uh, could you imagine yourself as Mr. Lu, who has able to withstand the temptation of lust by not getting swayed by the appearance of pretty person? So, if you have the ability to stay still, not being swayed, I'm not saying that you don't look at people, but you look and let it go. So venerable uh, Ding Hong or something, he talk, because he's young, uh, and he always talk, he also talked about this uh, lack of deep discussion on sexual misconduct and overcoming lust. Something that we all, especially young people now, because young have a lot of qi uh, easier to commit this. So venerable um, Ding Hong uh, talks about um, like trying to overcome lust. Right, it's not something that you uh, say no because you're not what is up by it. But what you're trying to do is you do not entertain it. You do not allow it to linger. So his his point of folk is he, he lingers after detecting a pretty presence, a pretty presence, yeah, around him, and he just lingers and allow his heart loosed with uh to the point of no control. So if you can hold back remain control over your heart, understand that this is a pretty person. He has done a good karma in past life. She has done a good karma in past life. And as a person, and that's it. Do not dwell on it. Act normally, react normally, and do not allow your heart to pursue on it. In our case, just name for, just name for, no matter how hard name for. And uh, sometimes in my personal experience, it might not work. But you have to have that concept of those are illusories and those are not something that you can uh, uh, pursue and get forever. Even though you have them as your wife or husband, people come to the level of so face will change. And um, we need to learn not to dwell on it. We need to learn how to look beyond that. 
So in this case, we need to learn from Mr. Liu for male and female alike. Uh, whole life has no evil thought arising, especially in terms of lust. Do not uh, allow lust take control of the, over the heart. With, with this kind of virtue, you can directly face the heaven and earth and they will respect you. Because you are a true person, you are truly virtuous. So we do not dare to say you reach a level where the other huts, they have severed, I mean the third level of sage in the Xiao Chen, they have severed like literally no concept of lust. That's another level. They have lust, but they're able to uh, not allowing it to control. And that's that's the beginning part. That's how we get started. Pretty flower, we respect the pretty flower, and then we move on. Do not stay on the flower. <laughs> that's it. So Si Jun Zi Tiao. So these are something you mention it as like the rules, the conditions of entry to your charity Wen Chang. So those are things that you you are the founders, one of the founders is supposed to represent the virtues. Because if you are not following these rules, who will? People will come in after you saying that the founders like you know not following their own policy. Why am I following it? So how can you reach achieve? An effect of educating the masses to be good if you're not good yourself. And also I need to emphasize on this point of sexual misconduct is to have a happy family. Once you have selected one person as your partner, it has to go beyond just looks. Looks are always a good way to start, but it's always beyond that. The whole point of this, and it's a whole book, So Kang Bao Jian, by Master Ying Guang, recommend to us, is to show us that how do you have a happy life? And Master Xue Wu also talks about how to have a happy life. Is to have uh, zizu, content, understand why, where you are, who you are, the affinities that you have with people around you, including your, your spouse, your own children and stuff. And so contentment is very important. And to have contentment, you must overcome these issues first. For those who have not married, including myself and all that, we need to learn how to overcome the obstacles of you know, getting uh, swayed by appearances, getting swayed by, you know, a certain uh, urge to speak out that harms people just for the sake of fun. Stuff like that. If this thing can be moderated, I'm not daring to say the severed like the Bodhisattva high level, but able to moderate it or able to control it, able to, you will understand when you know it, like, okay, now I, I can, I get a hang of it now. I'm driving myself properly. I'm I'm directing myself in the right course. I don't feel uh, the whole thing is not like jiao chao and si ban because there's a lot of misunderstanding on this moral teaching. Is this person holding a ruler and they're very strict, very stringent, and then they they act like a machine and robot. That's only for beginners. Like if you started to join a monk hood or something, then you need to shut your eyes, shut your ears, shut your mouth. Sorry, it's a bit rude. Um, close your mouth. Close your eyes, close your ears, um, so that you do not get swayed because you already have a lot of rubbish in there, a lot of trash in there. We need to clean up the trash. When you reach a higher level of uh, cultivation, your job has to go out and talk about this. And obviously, right now we are discussing and trying to uh, translate this into English. That's what I'm trying to do. But you go to the wider world, even more things happening. You need that level of stability inside. And this is important, my friend. And when you, the normal mode is not not seeing anything, not hearing anything, not talking anything. Normal mode is seeing what you need to see, see what is happening, hear what is happening, talk what is happening, but do not uh, dwell on it. Do not uh, get swayed by it. Continue on with your mission, your duty, or normally. Do not get too extreme on anything. Moderation, zhong dao. So all this uh, reason why Mr. Yu has such a terrible, pitiful and miserable existence at the first part of his life, first half of his uh, life, 47 years. Now he mentioned, Mr. Yu, you burned this um, paper, the yellow paper to the emperor. This is a way to send a message out there telling the heavens to reassess your condition. The heavenly emperor has already sent a lot of envoys and a lot of uh, auditors, auditors checking 
on your records, reconciliating the accounts. Uh, we have an accountant here, Maggie. I'm not sure if I'm using the term correctly. Reconciliating, auditing your deeds of good and bad with what you say, your actual deeds with what you say to us, uh, what you reported to us, and what you actually did recorded. And the findings of the audits, heavenly audits, is for few years, none, there's not even one proper, one thing that can be called good found from you. And this is why he has such a terrible condition. There's nothing you can give to him to alleviate the sufferings. He keeps digging the hole himself. He keeps digging his own grave. And he thinks he's doing the good for others. That's the worst part of it. And that's why he has... Uh, the, the encounter with Kitchen God might be the last, last line before he entirely co uh, collapsed. So, 